Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to worship this morning. For those who are listening from home, I'm Pastor Aaron Bovendam, and sharing the message and children's time is Pastor Dennis Preston. Grateful we're gathered for worship today, and for all those who are helping with worship, our AV team, those who help set up, and also for our musicians, for Lisa and Dan and Russ, and our Crosswalk Praise team gets to play in person for the first time at our second service today. So looking forward to that. Tonight we have our first Connect at the Campfire at 6.30 p.m. All are welcome. Uh, there will be a campfire ring set right outside the front doors. You can bring your lawn chairs. Um, I'm giving thanks for Brent Hansen, who's gonna share his testimony this evening. And our education committee has done all the planning for this, so really excited and I invite you to come. Um, our grand piano, the parts, I think we're supposed to come in this week and it should be repaired on the 21st, so we're looking forward to that as well. And once again, we'll celebrate Holy Communion, and this week is the last week we're using the little packets. So, um, yes, <laughs> it's been a long time. So um, if you have not used those yet, uh, there you need to take off the top clear layer first to get to the bread and then the next layer to get to the grape juice and just be careful not to squeeze it and I will guide you through that. I'll let you know when it's time to open them. 
Wednesdays at 9.15 a.m., we're having senior high breakfast and Bible study, and I'm grateful for four adults who have offered to prepare breakfast for the rest of June, as well as three adults who are giving their time and coming to spend time with us during that senior high Bible study, and especially for all the youth who are coming. I'm enjoying it so much. So grateful we can do that. And then we have in-person adult Bible study in between worship services starting at 940 each week this summer. Um, One person shared that it was fun last week, so I would encourage you to come and check it out this week. We're in the fellowship hall. We did discontinue the Zoom study. It seems like that time doesn't really work for people during the summer, so we're not doing the Wednesday evening one now. And our second service again is at 1030 a.m. for the summer. I think those are all the announcements, so I want to invite you to please rise as we sing our opening hymn. What is this place where we are meeting? Only a host earth its floor Walls and a roof sheltering people Windows for light and open door Yet it becomes a body that lives When we are gathered here And no We confess our sins freely to God and hear God's word of forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your path. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. In peace let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy mercy. For peace in the world For the wellness of the church of God And for the unity of all Let us pray to the Lord For 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together. O God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourself and nurture our growth that we may bear your truth and love to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. reading from Psalm 92, verses 1 through 4 and 12 to 15. A song for the Sabbath day. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High. To the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. In old age, they, are, they still produce fruit. They are always green and full of sap. for today comes from Mark, the fourth chapter. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up 
and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. For children's time today, we just heard about the kingdom of God or the realm of God's love being like a seed planted in the ground or like a mustard seed. Uh, and in a little bit, we're going to hear about God choosing a young person, David, to be king of Israel and how that all goes. Now, to think about all these amazing things, I want you to think about how ma amazing you are made in the image of God. And so for us to think about that, I want you to look at your hands. So everybody, pull out that hand, start moving those fingers, look at it a little bit. And uh, now close your eyes and touch your thumb to each finger, okay? Close the eyes, there's each finger. Isn't that cool? Your thumb knows exactly where those fingers are, and you can't even see them, okay? Isn't that cool? Here's another one. Um, so put your hand on the back of your arm, kind of back towards the elbow, okay? So you got to be below the elbow, just below the elbow. Now move your fingers, okay? Do you feel those muscles back there? Your muscles, to move those fingers, are all the way back there by your elbow. I think it's incredible, okay? So any, any other ways you think we're marvelously made? I just pointed out a couple. Anybody? Can, yeah, just think you can make that noise with your fingers. Cool. Uh, I think about what's between our ears that we sometimes forget to use. Um, <laughs> it's pretty amazing just how amazing our, our whole body is is made. So God's given us all these incredible gifts of these bodies in our lives, and then God invites us to use it to the best of our ability for others. Let us pray. Repeat after me. Dear Lord God, thank you for these amazing bodies. Help us to use them to love others. Because you first love us. Amen. Thank you. Now, I'm going to give a little intro before we read the lesson today. Uh, and during the sermon today, I want you to think about a question, okay? So this question maybe is even more important than listening to the sermon, but maybe you can do both. I have trouble with two things at once, but uh, you can do it, okay? So think about how God chooses you, okay? So how has God chosen you for common or special tasks today and through life? And how do you respond when you feel the, the proddings or the nudges come from God? Okay, that's a question to think about. Now, last week, we began a series of sermons this summer on King David and in the Old Testament from First and Second Samuel. Now, last week, we heard how in the days when Samuel was judge over Israel, the elders of Israel came to Samuel and they said... Samuel, you're old, and your sons do not follow in your ways. So, appoint for us then a king to govern us. Well, this upset Samuel, so Samuel told God about their request. And God responded, Samuel, they are not rejecting you. They are rejecting me as their king. So grant their request, but 
warned them that kings will bring new problems. Taxes, military subscription, forced labor, and a variety of other things. And Samuel, so Samuel tells the people, and the people say, yep, that's what we want. We want a king to fight our wars for us. Now, in the, <clears throat> the following chapters, before our reading for today, the story continues. So it tells about how God chooses Saul, and uh, that's kind of a, a humorous uh, story in itself. And Saul's anointed king by Samuel, and his qualifications seem to be he's handsome and he's tall, okay? However, there's a problem. Two times, doesn't take long, Saul disobeys God. So one time he's told to wait for Samuel to come to offer sacrifice before they go into battle. Samuel's late. Saul proceeds without Samuel disobeying God. Another time, Samuel doesn't, or Saul doesn't carry out God's command to completely destroy the Amalekites. Now listen to the consequences as we read Samuel 15, 34. Then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house in Gibeah of Saul. Of Saul. Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death, but Samuel grieved over Saul, and the Lord was sorry that he'd made Saul king over Israel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, do you come peaceably? And he said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abid Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. So Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him. For this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then sent out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Notice that Samuel was sent to anoint the next king and was supposed to listen to God for God's directions. Appoint the one I name for you, God says. So uh, Samuel's supposed to listen. But first, he looks with his eyes as the sons are paraded before him. Is it the oldest? He looks just like a king should look. Nope. Not him. So they go through them all. It's not any of them. And then they finally get 
to the little one. And here comes the joke. It's not obvious to us. Oh, there's one more, but he's out taking care of the sheep. What we don't know is shepherd was a symbol for king in the Middle East at this time. <clears throat> so the one who's actually out doing the work of a king is the one who's going to be the king. So irony not obvious to us, but the ones uh, first hearing this story would have noticed. Did you notice how God is not like human beings who look at outward appearance? God looks on the inside. Now, in our popular culture, what do we do? We usually look at outward appearances. Our leaders in government and in the church, they tend to follow our cultural norms. For example, one of the professors at Luther is unable to walk. He had cancer as a teenager, and he gets around all the time in a wheelchair. He led a conference not too long ago, and one of the participants of that conference came up to him and said, it is interesting to see you leading this conference because that's pretty rare. You look around and you just don't see many people in wheelchairs in positions of leadership. Currently in the United States, there's one U.S. Sen senator and one governor uh, that are in wheelchairs, but you will never see the wheelchair. When Franklin Roosevelt was president and handicapped from polio, they went to great efforts to hide his disability. We tend to look on the outside, we tend to choose our leaders accordingly, and we tend to underrate our own personal ability to lead. Think about what God desires today and what God is seeking to bring into existence today in our world. God's seeking to establish a kingdom where appearances is not the deciding factor, but the heart, the character of the person, and God's choosing is what matters. Remember, the, what was the question I asked you at the beginning of the sermon? Okay? So, in what ways does God choose you? How has God chosen you for common and special tasks in life, and how do you respond when you feel nudged or chosen by God? Now, we just read about how David was chosen for a huge task to be king over Israel and the establishment of this line of kings. And in the coming weeks, we're going to hear more about that story. David is chosen when he's just a young person, but God has lots in store for him. We have been chosen in our baptism. We're chosen for great things to follow Jesus, to love one another as Jesus has loved us, as God loves us. And the details in that for each and every one of us will be different. God does not look at our appearance, or our station in life, or our age. God looks at us through the eyes of Jesus as a beloved child of God, as a beloved brother or sister of Jesus, and God chooses us for the common and the special tasks that are put before us each and every day. Now, as Samuel needed to listen for God's leading and choosing David, so God invites us to listen for God's proddings, God's nudgings, what he gives us through his word and through prayer and just through what goes through our head during the days. The following story is about one peasant farmer in Mexico. This is an absolutely true story. Uh, and this peasant farmer responded to the promptings and the nudging of God. Now, the, our America, uh, Evangelical Lutheran Church in America supports this ministry, and I have visited there two times in Mexico. And it's a nonprofit that was started by Mexicans. It's called Amextra. 
So it's the Mexican Association for Transformation of Rural and Urban Communities. Now, the Mexicans who founded Amextra, after much prayer and discussion over months, they decided to begin their ministry by going to the very marginalized people of Mexico in a region where peasant farmers, campesinos, are very poor and very discouraged. They brought together people from the area, both from the more well-to-do in the local towns and many of the campesinos. Now the townspeople, they arrived on time. The campesinos were hours late. Now come to find out, many of them had gotten up in the dark to walk many miles to the gathering. For two days, the leader gave a Bible study that gave an overview of the major themes of the Bible, starting with the creation story, which many of the campesinos had never heard with such clarity. And at the end, it was agreed to meet again in six months and report what their meeting had inspired. Now the leader, Pepe, he thought the campesinos would not return because they had hardly said a word the whole time. They didn't seem to be participating in the conference. Six months later, there were fewer well-to-do people from the towns, and of course, they were on time. The campesinos, again, were late, but this time, their numbers had doubled. Pepe asked what they'd been doing. Well, the townspeople, they told about meetings that they had held, but not much had transpired. Then a campesino from the back row, he stood up and told his story. He said, now, as you told us about Genesis and how God created all things and how God cares for all these things God has created, I learned that God is a campesino because God cares for the earth and all God's children and created it all to produce. I, a campesino, am the most important person in the world. I work with God to produce food for God's children. As I walked home after our meeting, I saw the erosion and how there are no trees on the hills. The hills used to be tr covered with trees. I realized I was created to take care of the hills, and I didn't do it. So when I returned home, I told my wife that we were going to plant trees. She said I was crazy. I was able to get free trees from the local agrarian office. They had been trying to encourage us campesinos to plant trees for a long time. I started to plant trees, and my neighbors too thought that I was crazy. So I used our traditions to explain what I was doing. Our traditions tell us that the earth is our sister. Genesis says we are made of dust. So it must be true. We are to care for our sister, and planting trees is a gift to our sister. Eventually, my wife and neighbors, they helped. Think of the transformation in this man's life and those around him. He realized he's created in the image of God. He's a campesino, and because I'm a campesino, I'm a very important person. God created the earth to produce, and I work with God to feed people and to care for creation. Now, you and I are not campesinos, obviously, in Mexico, or a shepherd boy whom God chooses to be king of Israel, okay? However, God chooses us in the circumstances we find ourselves with the variety of gifts and abilities that we each have, and God says, you are my child. Today, I choose you to be my follower, caring for and loving the people around you and the creation I have made to the best of your ability. And I will love you, and I will forgive you, and guide you through Jesus, and fill you with my spirit. Amen. Let us pray. 
Dear Lord Jesus, fill us with your spirit. Help us follow. Help us respond when you nudge and prod. In your name we pray. Amen. And now with the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now have a time of prayer, and after each petition, I'll pray. When you speak, O God, and you respond, help us to listen. Let us pray. Holy God, you plant seeds of faith in every nation. Enliven your church so that the good news of your grace may root and grow throughout the world. When you speak, O God. Creator, even the trees, shrubs, and flowers delight in your goodness. From the depths of the soil to the highest mountain, bring forth new plants. Restore growth to places suffering drought support farmers and give them what they need and we praise and thank you for the rain this past week when you speak O god judge of nations we pray for our leaders and all those in power grant them the ability to regard those whom they lead with humility dedicating their lives in service to others when you speak O god divine comforter You show compassion to those in need and provide relief to those who call on you. We lift up today all those who are on our prayer list, especially Judy and others who are on our hearts and minds. 
bring them the healing that they are looking for. Bless all who suffer, especially people trapped in cycles of poverty and homelessness. When you speak, O oh God. Sovereign God, this house of worship belongs to you. Today we give you thanks and pray for our church musicians, especially Russ and our Crosswalk Praise Team, for Dan and Lisa today, and for all others who lead worship with song. We dedicate to you the joyful noise that comes from this place, the cries of children, and the melody of voice and instruments. When you speak, O oh God. Eternal God, we give thanks for our ancestors in the faith who are now at home with you. We look forward to that day when we are reunited in your new creation. When you speak, O oh God. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. We now share the peace with one another, and we're not yet moving around and shaking hands, but you can share a sign of peace however you're comfortable. The peace of the Lord be with you always. It's now time for our offering, and while we're not yet passing the plates, uh, we are offering ourselves to God in service to God. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. I invite you to please rise, and we won't yet open our communion cups until after we're seated and sing Lamb of God. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life and so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn Please lift your grape juice and wafer now as we hear the words of institution. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. You may lower your cups as we pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And you may be seated and wait to open your cups till after we sing. this time you may open the top layer to get to the bread and the next layer then to get to the grape juice and hear that this is the body and blood of Christ given for you. For anyone who does not yet commune, receive this blessing. Jesus loves you and is always with you. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world as you do. In your name we pray. Amen. Please rise for the blessing. And now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. i 
now go in peace to love and serve our God.